Ladies and gentlemen, K Kim here. Welcome to the daily update. Actually, welcome to the market update. Um, as we look at uh, look at other indices on the uh, weekend update or weekend video, a um, little bit more extensively, um, we've been doing the um, 65 minute daily updates on Monday through th Thursdays. On Friday, I like to do a little bit more extensive uh, analysis. You know, looking at the um, S and P, Nasdaq, Dow, other indices. We'll look at VIX today. Um, where's my pen? Uh, I don't know where my pen is here. My pen should be coming out. There you go. So we got Spider. Uh, we're gonna be looking at Spider, Q's, Diamond. Look at VIX. Uh, we've been. Let's skip equities. Uh, we'll talk about equities again once I feel like you know maybe some of the equities are worth talking about. Maybe worth uh, you know accumulate certain levels but we'll stick with the indices today uh, maybe next we'll have to check out a couple of equity uh, individual equities but today let's stick with the index VIX we'll look at gold and Bitcoin so it is all coming up right now so um, here let's go to the uh, 65 minutes are first um, here and trying to figure out what we can expect going into Monday here. So it looks like, um, so this is where we closed yesterday, right on my long-term moving average there, right? And looks like this was the uh, first hour right here. Let me zoom in here. So it looks like that was the first hour, right? So we slightly gapped up. And then there was some fluctuations. The gap got filled right away. And there was a little bit of ramp, I guess, on the second hour. You see that long lower wick, that long upper wick here, right? So there's a little bit of ramp on the start of it. Gap up, faded, dip was bought, market pushed up higher. And then there was a little bit of a, a move to the upside. But this is the reason why, you know, I, I gave the benefit of the doubt uh, to the sellers um, last, this pretty much this entire week. And you can see that my short-term moving average uh, continue to act as resistance here, right? Yesterday we talked about how my uh, mid-term moving average is acted as a resistance there. And then once that short-term, we you know the price got below my short-term moving average right here, and then that short-term average continue to act as resistance here, and then here on the second hour today. And that's the third hour, fourth hour, fifth hour, sixth hour. I tweeted out earlier today. A uh, few things, uh, I, 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 I tweeted out a couple tweets today. First was when I saw the um, my long-term moving average, when the price got below my long-term moving average, right? And then second, I tweeted out that this is a gap area support. And we talked about this gap, and this is why you, know, you wanna continue to track these gaps. And uh, that's the level where we found support there, just right on it, right? And this gap still remains open. so. The gap wasn't fully filled. This is actually initially, at least in the going into Monday, this is it, it, it favors the buyers. And if you've been tracking my tweets and my blog posts and my videos, um, and, and this a lot throughout this, this move last several months, um, since March lows, actually, you know, we talked about how uh, when the gap doesn't get filled, especially after draw down or drawn out down move like this, it actually favors the buyers, at least in the short term. That could be, that could lead to something else. Here, I'll give you an example of this. Is this one right here. So you can see right here, this was back in uh, May 27th. Uh, we saw that there was this gap up. Um, bears were not able to fill this gap, entirety of it, the entire gap here, they left some. And it, it came back and haunt them for a really long time. So bears should have filled this gap. They didn't do that. Well, initially we went from 297 to 323 looks like, and we saw hard pullback there. And you see how right here, it looks like there were similar activities occur back in early, or early to mid June, June 11, 12, right? And you can see that how Price gone below 
lot of my moving averages here but this was actually still above my long-term moving average but however this gap right here you see this gap was not filled see that and that's what made the price go from 297 to 315 it did fall back later but even on the second time pullback it never breached this gap this gap continue to stay open right this is the reason why it is important that we understand where the gaps are we understand where the levels are we understand what the moving average is doing and things like that um fail to fill it fail to fill it fail to fill it and you know what happened from 300 to we went to 360 all because this little tiny gap was not filled right Technically speaking, there are other things obviously made the market move, but purely technically speaking, that's what that was. Well, we're back here, and this gap is also that move right here. Was not able to fill this gap. And this is the second time retesting it. So far, we're finding support here. So what bears want to do, Bears want to fill this gap. Just get it over with. Don't play with it. Don't dazzle with it. Because who knows what bulls can do. Because in the long term, we're still an uptrend, right? I mean, the sentiment that I've been giving you guys this week. Short-term bearish. Mid-term neutral to bearish. Long-term bullish, right? So, if we zoom out here, you can see that my long-term moving average is right here. We're kind of going back and forward, dancing around in that vicinity we actually closed above it you see that right here we actually we found support in the gap area and we closed above my long-term moving average it's almost like this dip buyers understood that we need to at least get it above it so it's not so much underwater when it comes to long-term moving average right so we are above long-term moving average after finding support on that support let's check out that oscillator here real quick here so the oscillators uh we initially bounced here but uh it failed made a lower high and that's really not a good sign so we we kind of have a little bit of different look here than um you know late june uh, we didn't see this thing going all the way back up to overbought level, breaking above the midterm moving average because whatever very similar, you know, oscillator activities happen back in late June here. You can see that they're very, very similar. We've been talking about this pretty much the entire week this week. Difference is uh, we got rejected on the midterm moving average. And with that, uh, we have... A lower high on the oscillator and then um, oscillator is kind of coming back down to the uh, kind of near the oversold level here so this is this is the oversold level the problem is uh, because of the uh, oscillator did not go all the way back up now kind of similar to what happened here you know when the uh, that higher low was put in you see that right there you see that when the higher low, okay, that's a higher low, that's a lower high. When the higher low was put in back in early August, right? Even though price hit price hit overbought level, it kept moving higher, oscillating back and forth on top of its band after the higher low there. So problem becomes when you see that the oscillator is pre prematurely curling back down instead of going all the way, tagging the upper level of the band that tells us that there it's the trend is getting weak i mean the uptrend and the the downtrend is getting strengthened right i mean so we have to be fair with this um i was fair with my analysis it's so funny because when when the market was going up over almost every single entire month of september because I was every single day I was giving it bullish, bullish, right? The sentiment is bullish, bullish sentiment. Is bullish. And somebody was like, "Well, why are you always giving it bullish sentiment?" And now, like, I don't know if somebody was, I forgot where it was. Like, why are you always being bearish now? <laughs> like, well, I gotta tell you what the market is doing. You know what I mean? Like, 
Um, this is what the market is telling us. That's why things are a little bit difficult now, right? We did see initial bounce here and here, but you don't see what we saw like back in July and August where we see a bounce and usually it have its legs, right? This one didn't have its legs. This one didn't have its leg. You know what I mean? So you can see already, you can kind of feel that this is a little bit different scenario than, um, you know, like July or August as we're getting into, um, is, is this the second week? Yeah, the second week of September here, the second weekend of the September here. So with this, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 so what's gonna happen is even if we go back down, hit that oversold level and bounces back up, uh, that, that, that resistance could be a problem. I mean, yeah, obviously, obviously anything can happen. We could see this thing potentially breaking higher and, and, and getting back above it and, and neutralizing all this. That's true until we see that, right? Until we see that I want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the sellers in the short term, neutral to bearish in the midterm. I'm still bullish though in the long term looking at 65 minute chart. Now they were now they were, were back above my long term moving average and my long term moving average is still um, actually uh, rising. Right, we have not seen my long-term moving average declining. What what we are seeing declining is my mid-term moving average. So you can, if I actually zoom out here, just looking at the mid-term moving average here, you can see that mid-term moving average is now declining. Right, so when when they are declining, you know things can get choppier. There's a decline here. Pretty much only few times we saw my mid-term moving average declining was uh, in month of June, and what we're seeing now in September. So I'm still continue to gonna I'm I'm gonna continue to expect volatility. That doesn't mean the market isn't gonna pop. That doesn't mean we're not gonna see market you know seeing some couple days of rallies. I'm saying it's gonna be hectic environment. You guys remember back in June? If you've been watching my videos back in June, almost every single video it's gonna be hectic. It's gonna be hectic. It's gonna be hectic. It's 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 bearish. It's it's neutral. You know what I mean? So we're kind of getting into that hectic environment as my midterm moving average is declining uh, there. Let's go back to daily chart. So and you have to understand when I analyze 65 minute chart versus daily chart, my tone of voice is gonna change because when I check, it's just, this is what a lot of people don't understand. Each time frame is gonna have each individual sentiments because when I look at 65 minute, I'm actually really analyzing pretty short term overall. We're looking at what's gonna happen on Monday, what's gonna happen on Tuesday, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen on Wednesday. When I go to daily chart, now I'm looking at, okay, what's gonna happen this month in the next month, maybe couple of months, maybe on rest of the year. Right, what we can expect going into rest of this month. That you see what I mean? So my tone of voice is gonna change. You must understand these things. You can't just be like trying to figure out if the market is just gonna give you black and white signal. It ain't gonna give you that signal. It's not just price and volume, it's not just uh, keep it simple, stupid. Those all those terms is made up to make you feel better. That is, there's some kind of a simpler, uh, easier approach to the market. No. There isn't. Market is extremely complicated, just like your life is extremely complicated. Our people out there will make make it sound like it's easy so that they can grab your attention. But I'm here to tell you the truth that it is not easy. It is extremely, extremely complicated. Just like your life is extremely complicated. You know what I mean? It feels easy. Why don't everybody just do it? Why don't everybody make money? Why is it only 10% retail traders survive? Right? Some people can get lucky. You come in, you got lucky, you can make money, but the longer those people stay in the market, you know what happens to them. They usually wipe out their account on the next volatility or some shenanigans that happens in the market. So I want you to understand there is no easy way out. There's no uh, just the certain formula, certain in perfect indicator, certain setup that is perfect that you're gonna it's gonna be hundred percent every single time. That's not how it works in the market. So when I look at daily chart, I'm gonna zoom out here, but I want I want to note that we're we've been talking about this resistance here, and this is a resistance that. Um, that I talked about, uh, we're probably gonna at least slow down um, in that vicinity. 
Well, we're pulling back here. I think currently we're suffering about 7% corrections overall since the peak. So you can see about 7, 8% there. Let's say 7% uh, since the, uh, since the uh, September 2nd uh, peak there. So looking at the daily chart, it's a little bit different um, vibe because you can see my midterm moving average is there. My midterm moving average is here. My midterm moving average is also there and also here. So you can see looking at the daily, okay, so these are the levels where we found support in the past. Um, so this is a likely level to find, see some kind of bounce here. And we did see some dip buying, you know, activities this morning or today, or at least late hour. It is no coincidence where we saw, and that looks like a little bit like hammer candle. But if you guys remember my hammer candle analysis, I've done, was it this week or last week or something like that? Three times a body, the wig, the, the body there, you can probably fit one and a half here on this wig. It's not really like textbook, but again, um, it's, we will need to see some kind of follow through, but my 20 MA, uh, my short term moving average there on the daily chart, it is declining right now. So it has been acting as resistance here. You can see that last couple this week. That's what, that's what was causing this market was not able to continue to move higher. And so, but we did see some uh, buying activities here right on that uh, midterm moving average. And this midterm moving average does have pretty impressive resume, right? Found support there, here, here. And I was actually talking about this midterm moving average back in late April, throughout pretty, pretty much throughout the April, early April, late April, and all throughout May. You can go check the videos. And this is a level where, you know, I was talking about the scooping action, right? The midterm moving average is resistance. We saw that that cross there with the short term moving average, long term moving average, and then also they they cross back to the upside, and that midterm moving average is is is, is scooping up these prices, scooped up here again. I talked about it in late throughout the June how my midterm moving average still rising. You see that right here. You can see when you look at the daily chart, it's a little bit of different vibe, vibe here. It's a little bit more bullish sentiment, despite the fact that we got about 7% correction. So when I just look at just pure technical aspect of it, I still want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the short term. Looking at the daily chart, so keep in mind my 65-minute chart analysis, my daily chart analysis, they're different. Because I don't want you to be like, well, you said bearish in the short term, K, okay, on the 65 minute chart. Why are you saying short term? But again, because I'm looking at things more, but entire month of this this month, maybe going into the next month, it's different, right? Maybe next several weeks. However, so when I look at just purely technical aspect of this price action, I still want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers, uh, maybe short to midterm on the daily chart. I, and on the shorter term, yeah, it's a little bit more bearish because of my shorter term moving average is declining. Uh, we're not looking like this. We're looking more like, like, like you know what I mean? Like, like some hectic environment that we saw in June. So purely technical perspective, uh, you know, it looks bullish here and we may find support here, but psychologically speaking, this is where, um, you know, uh, things can get a little bit um, dicey, a little bit more complicated. So it's not just, okay, well, that I see that blue dotted moving average, that midterm moving average, right? Right on that gap area here. Okay, that finding support. Well, it looks like we're going to may have another rally like this, like we saw in June or July through August, right, Kay? I wish the market is that simple. So this is where I'm going to say that it's not that simple. Right now that the fear has been sucked out of this market, because still in June and July, there were a lot of fear with that lot of fear, with a lot of bearish sentiment, market really thrived with that fear. Problem is, psychologically speaking, there aren't much fear right now. A lot of these people, a lot of retail traders are kind of in that buy the dip kind of mentality stocks only go up you just keep by the dip you will make money in this market kind of mentality so 
I feel like technically this is a good level of support. Psychologically, I feel like sometimes market don't like it too much when these levels gets respected too many times, when things get quote unquote too easy, where people don't think that, oh my God, yeah, we found support here in June and May and April, man. This is this is no brainer. See, this is how you lose crap load of money in the market. After, so you, you got scared here to go long. You got scared here to go long. You got scared here to go long. And you feel bad about it, right? Most retail traders feel really bad about this, that they, they, they missed out April, May, June opportunity. So now they really don't want to miss this opportunity right here in September. You see my midterm moving average getting uh, you know hit again. So what happens is the people who missed out there, now they really want to buy this dip. And this is something maybe they've been talking about. They're thinking about it. They're preparing for this because they missed out. They couldn't chase when this thing starts soaring. So they tell themselves that, you know what? On the next pullback, I am going to buy this dip this time. And market is so brutal sometimes. Market isn't very merciful sometimes. I'm talking psychologically. And so this is where you want to be a little bit more careful this is where we could initially see a bounce maybe even go all the way up to all-time high even you know and then on then all of a sudden some brutality might come or we might come halfway or something like that so this is where i was buying these dips back in april may as you guys remember and june aggressively and as you guys know, I was closing out a lot of my longs up here, especially my exotics, right? Keeping my longer term, really, really long term positions, but closing out all my aggressive exotics, call options, triple shares, double shares, and some of the uh, tech stocks that has gone up like vertically, right? So I've unloaded a lot of those to uh, minimize my risk, risk, but I'm still long. So with my long-term positions, so I actually don't mind seeing this thing to make a move to the upside. Only problem is I think right now the market is performing something here. The, the fear has been sucked out of this market a market has been conditioning complacency in the last two months with this move. And a lot of people really want to jump in prematurely, aggressively here. Because you know why? Because they don't want to miss out another this, another that, another this. They don't, they don't want to miss out another these, these big rallies. And I think, psychologically speaking, you want to be cautious here. Maybe maybe more shorter term but i i think there could be more some choppy volatile uh price action coming this rest of this month if not even going all the way to october also and then the next two months again there's a possibility this thing might even go make new all-time highs before falling back over so i'm being cautious um you know this is kind of a level that I don't fully trust it. I was very aggressively buying these dips here, but not here. Not here. Just to let you guys know, I'm not buying anything down on here. And again, there's there's an article where I'll be buying, right? There's an article in the description below. I wrote that article like a week ago where I will be preparing to accumulate. You can see that article description description below. So this is kind of the level I feel like where market potentially be letting some of these guys to chase it. Um, you know, maybe they chase it up here and maybe adding into it, averaging it down, thinking the market is always going to go on. That's always gets trouble. That's how you get in trouble in this market is when everybody is thinking, because things gets pretty crowded. Again, the fear is sucked out of this market. Everybody's in a bullish mode. And this is where I'm going to be start to be cautious, right? So, so going into next week, though, let's you will, we we are, we are right on that midterm moving average there. So we we may see a bounce, and we will go from there. We got the shorter moving average curling down though, 
and I'll give you guys an update. Now, obviously, we're gonna look at the market every single day next week, and we'll go from there. Let's look at Q's here real quick. A very, very similar, you know what I mean, uh, analysis applies here also. We are below my short-term moving average. We're just right on my mid-term moving average. It is no coincidence where it is just, it was right over here and we're just holding, well, we're just pretty much sandwiched between those two moving average. If we do lose that though, things can get a little bit more uglier if we do lose uh, this uh, mid-term moving average here because I think the next support might be here at 252 That's prior resistance new support. Actually, let's put that there, All right? So that's a prior resistance new support. So if we lose that 251, 252 is the next level of support to watch. If we do see a bounce, we got the uh, short-term moving average at 280. We have the gap area right there, which is at 300 on the Qs. Quickly on the Dow. Um, so Dow looks like got up and filled both of these gaps. Let's get remove that and then that act as resistance. Quite didn't hit new all-time highs though, but definitely uh, it filled these gaps, right? And that's a good sign in the long term. That's a good sign in the long term, killing the selling pressure. So you always want to fill these gaps, right? That's a problem with the bears, which we talked about earlier, how bears didn't fill that up gap. And then it was there, it, it became a problem back in June. And you guys remember, I just talked about that looking at 65 minute chart here. Let's, we just talked, about, just in case you forgot, uh, we just talked about that right right here. So this, these gap, this gap was not fully filled. This gap wasn't fully filled. This gap wasn't filled. That became a problem for bears. And then we went from 297 to 360. You guys remember that, right? So. Uh, for the diamond to get up and filling all the down gaps and that's always uh, that's always a good Accomplishment looking at things in the longer term the short term though What happens is when the gap gets filled it's gonna act as resistance. That's what we're seeing a pullback there We're currently retesting prior resistance as potential new support. I'm gonna put in another support here though Right there. So that kind of fits with that with these levels kind of sandwiched between my midterm moving average here, right? So that midterm moving average does have pretty impressive resume here. So we were kind of um, in that support. Keep in mind, Diamond is continuing to cultivate higher high now. I remember at one point, Dial, Dial was uh, extremely laggy, right? It, it was completely, it was outperforming, uh, underperforming quite a bit, and it came up quite a bit here, only negative 3% year to date while cultivating another higher high, and that's important. So looking at longer term, definitely bullish market. Don't get me wrong. I am bullish in the long term. I'm just looking at things more of a midterm, looking at the daily chart. I feel like it's going to be a difficult market uh, you know, this month, entire month of September. It's not going to be easy by the dip and all of a sudden that thing just you know shoots up like it did in August and July or like it did in June, early June, right? So diamonds hanging uh, hanging around in that vicinity. It's a good level of support here. We got midterm moving average, and this vicinity is all gonna act as pretty solid support there. Let's go to VIX. So we've been analyzing VIX here last time, last Friday. We talked about this level here, uh, resistance level. It is no coincidence we tagged it pulling back here. So. When you look at VIX though, again, look at this gap here. It came back again, man, on the VIX right here. The gap was never filled. Gap was never filled and that became problem for VIX bears. You can see we found some, no coincidence, we found support there. We initially bounced off of that gap area, right? And initially there was a gap was all the way here and you can see how we kind of hang around here but never fill the gap entirety of it so i think that makes it a little bit more like and, and, and we initially see a bounce now we're coming back down and we got the short-term moving average and my mid-term moving average hovering around in that vicinity well last time when we saw this thing spike pull back it didn't see a just smooth move to the downside. What happened was we see right here, right here, where my short to midterm moving average is residing. You see that for about two weeks. For about two weeks, you see that on that square. For two weeks, 
that was very volatile, right? It went up and down, up and down. There's a green candle, red candle. Right here, right? So you can see there's that. It was, you can see that candle. We see that. We got the green candle right, right here. Uh, we see that, um, you know, red, green, red, green. Now that's, that's a couple weeks. We're just kind of hanging above my mid to short term moving average. After this thing s spiked and then pulled back and then hit my short to mid term moving average, a lot up and down sideways though before this thing actually broke below it and then continue came down. And this was July, August bullish run on the equities. Now we saw a spike pulling back after hitting the resistance here, um, here, here, and there. And now what is it, what is it doing? We're hitting my short to midterm moving. That's kind of what I mean going into next week. We could we could see this thing trying to bounce or some kind of shenanigans up and down. It could be a choppy market going into next week, looking at the VIX there. Let's go to gold. I'm still not in gold after exiting my entire long positions on gold uh, near the highs here. And I'm just still seeing uh, what I'm going to... I'm actually... I Obviously, for because I'm out loud, I actually want... The you know gold market will see a steeper pullbacks because I want to get I want to get back in, and I'm looking at potentially like maybe 165 on GLD. That will be an initial phase, preparing some of these levels here. I will say right some of these levels right there 165 on GLD to 150 uh, in this vicinity that I will be thinking of thinking to accumulate. Um, some of those uh, gold and silver mining stocks. Uh, Bitcoin, I'll let you guys go with this. Uh, Bitcoin, let's see. Yeah, so it looks like last time, yeah, last time we talked about that, that, that hammer. And yeah, you see how the hammer was formed right beneath my midterm moving average right here. And we talked about you know how that hammer needs to see a follow through to the upside and also talked about that that long lower wick sometimes the wick is way too long and sometimes it's like not organic it's not like you know what i mean so it's like it was like way too long wick and then like you know look in they should have gapped that up or see a follow through that's why when it, whenever you do a candlestick candlestick analysis you always want to see a follow through we never saw a follow through we actually gapped down ever since then my midterm moving average is acting as resistance there so we're kind of stuck between here what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this down because that's a gap area right here so 1086 1054 we're trying to we're trying to uh find support here i'm still long on this since about 11 11 uh 1150 or so and so we got this support going on potentially the gap area and so we'll see how it plays i will come back next week and we'll Deal with it, but in the in, you know short term is definitely looking more bearish. Uh, this price is below short to mid term moving. I so like short term bearish, mid term, you know neutral to bearish, and longer term more uh, more of a bullish stance on the longer term because uh, this is uh, this is a higher high here, and I look at these things as these two lows as higher low. What we don't understand, what we don't know, and this is what I talked about even back in when you know uh, Bitcoin grayscale Bitcoin was trading at fifteen. Then what we don't know is when are we going to cultivate higher low? Is it going to cultivate here? Are we going to be here? Are we going to be coming maybe make, you know, here, breaking below the support? We don't know. So we'll come back and we'll see how it plays out next week. Well, that's it for me for this weekend. Uh, hopefully uh, this analysis will give you some kind of insight in your own analysis and prepare for what is potentially coming going into uh, next week. I'll come back for you guys on Monday. We'll re-examine on the 65 minutes chart analysis. We'll go from there. Enjoy your weekend and good luck training next week. Excuse me.